The city of Yaroslavl, over a thousand years old, on Russia's mightiest river, the Volga, is famous for its stunning, colorful church domes. But on this day, it's the city's main train station that's the center of attention. This is a Syria breakthrough train. It's a traveling exhibition of Russian war trophies from its five-year campaign in Syria. Russia sends humanitarian aid to Syria and helps win back the territory from terrorists, said this young cadet. He's parroting the Kremlin's message about why Russians should feel pride for supporting Bashar al-Assad's regime in Syria in helping defeat the Islamic State. Who else will protect the rest of the world if not Russia, said an obviously proud Elena Chekanova. To protect a neighbor, only Russia is capable of that. On board the train are tanks, rocket launchers and small arms, all providing a vivid illustration of the ferocity and complexity of the Syrian battlefield. Have a look at this. This is a, a former UN vehicle, in fact, that, as we understand it, used to patrol the Golan Heights, but somehow ended up in the hands of uh, uh, Syrian opposition forces and then was captured by ISIS and has now uh, been recaptured and put on this train. It's fair to say the equipment on the train represents an accurate portrayal of what we saw when our crew visited Syria's desert in 2017. Russia's military took us to a captured Islamic State factory where tanks had been modified and packed with explosives for suicide missions. This is the terrorist technique, said the soldier, noting the extra armor plating that was added so this vehicle could ram checkpoints. Still, the narrative that comes with the trophy train is right out of the Kremlin's propaganda talking points. This military equipment will show, said Major General Yuri Yevdyshenko, the international level of help for the terrorists. He's telling the crowd that Western countries aided terrorism and the Islamic State. And there's no mention of Western claims that Russian airstrikes killed thousands of Syrian civilians and propped up a murderous regime. Some of this equipment, in fact, may never have been used by the Islamic State. Take this converted Toyota Land Cruiser. The lettering here suggests, in fact, that it was once the property of one of the many Western-backed rebel groups that was fighting the Assad regime. One of the more egregious examples of distortion is the so-called chemical weapons display inside one of the train cars. This lab was found in April 2018 by residents after fighters were driven out of the city, said the soldier. That's a likely reference to the gas attack in Douma, near Damascus, around the same time that left 70 people dead. Much of the world blames Assad's forces for the attack, and the UN agency that investigated said it found no evidence to support Russia's claims that opposition fighters were behind it. But many Russians here accepted what they were told. I understand the terrorists use this, said Vladimir Gosev. Others, such as Irina Kasnikina, who teaches English in Yaroslavl, were more skeptical. For Russians, it, it is maybe to increase their enthusiasm and to support our authorities, maybe, but... War is war. This tour comes at a time when Russian support for military missions overseas is decidedly mixed. Almost third of Russian, every third of Russian, uh, said that it brought no good, no harm. Independent pollster Stepan Goncharov says with a weak economy, Russians are lukewarm at best to the Syria mission as they don't see what economic gain it brings. They understand that government should spend money more inside Russia than outside, and this is the main point for them. Whether or not the Syria train won over any skeptics, it did draw good crowds, so it accomplished at least part of its mission. Human rights groups and Western governments will continue to argue with Russia over the rest. Chris Brown, CBC News, in Yaroslavl.